Yeah. Well, hi, Jeff. How are you today? Doing well. How are you? Good. Well, we are here at First Presbyterian Church in Fayetteville, North Carolina. Fayetteville, North Carolina. I'm so happy to be yeah, here. Yeah, we are so happy to have you here. And we just want to take some time to ask you a few questions. Sure, sure. For our church family and others to learn a little bit more about you. Absolutely. Okay, the first question I want to ask you is tell us a little bit about you and your family. Yeah. I have, I have a, a beautiful wife who is my better half. Um, her name is Hannah. We have three dogs, very hyperactive, and we are the, uh, the stereotypical dog people who talk about our, our dogs as if they're ki our kids. Um, but we, we, we want to start a family. We would love to um, start, a, start, a, start a family. It's one of the reasons why we're here. We would love to plant roots. We know that you're from, you grew up in New Mexico, so tell us a little bit about what it was like growing up in yeah. New Mexico. Yeah. New Mexico is, is rich with culture. It's, it's rich with um, a lot of, of, of um, Hispanic and, and uh, Native American influence, and it was, it's a wonderful place to grow up. Uh, probably the best Mexican food you will ever have is in New Mexico. I, and I, I would I would die on that hill for sure. Um, if you've ever seen the show, I don't know. I'm not suggesting the show, but if you've ever seen the show Breaking Bad, uh, it's a very kind of rough place to to live and to grow up. Uh, so that's sort of my upbringing. It, it, it's this weird mix of, of of beauty and culture, but also just a, a place where. You know, it was a little bit, a little bit rough. So, uh, um, but, but, but I love it. I look back. I, I miss a lot of things about it. I miss the weather. I have many people that come up to me and say, "I love Santa Fe, and it's it's beautiful there." Well, it is. It is just absolutely gorgeous there. Good. Okay, you've been here for one week, right? Uh, I think two. <laughs> I think two. two. It's, it's two my weeks. it's my second week. Two weeks. Yeah. What? Are your first impressions of First Presbyterian Church? So the the hospitality has been just amazing. Uh, I, I gotta I gotta call out Bud Lafferty, who's just been I've been living with him while we're trying to while we're trying to get a house. Um, I'm living with Bud, and he's been just amazing and just such a sweetheart. And and uh, but but it's not just Bud; it, it, it's the whole church. It's it's just the way that. Everybody has just sort of in, embraced me with hospitality. Um, it's just been great. And, and not only that, but I, I feel natural. I feel like this place is just a wonderful fit. I, I don't feel like I've been, I mean, a week or two, whatever it is, I, I don't feel I've been struggling my way through this. I just feel like, it just feels like a, a home. Yeah. Good. We're yeah. so happy to hear that. <laughs> Um, who do you look up to as your own role models in preaching? Uh, there's a lot of books. I'm a, I'm a bookaholic, so I read a lot of books. But when it comes to preaching, I think there's, there's one person that was just so influential on my life, and that was my campus minister uh, when I was in college. His name is Shaner Newsom, And, I mean, his preaching, if we're talking about preaching, his preaching just it, it changed the way I preached. It was so vulnerable. It was, uh, it was honest. It was gospel centered where, and, and grace, grace centered where every sermon he preached was just about God's grace and love. And boy, I mean, that, 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 that changed everything for me. What role does prayer play in your daily life and ministry? When I did not pray enough in the past, uh, it, it, it I, I look back and say, if, man, if I would have only prayed better, if I would have only prayed more, and I believe that. I think that prayer has to be that foundation in any ministry, no matter what you do. And it feels very counterintuitive. It feels as if, well, if I pray, well, I'm not doing enough. I'm just sitting here in a room, you know, uh, talking to God, well, I should be out there doing things. And, and I think when we do that, that, that messes everything up. I think prayer is just so important to 
everything we do. Uh, over the years, I've learned to appreciate prayer more, and, and that is something that I, I sort of guard these days more vigilantly, where I think prayer, I wake up every morning and I, and I, I pray. And I, I drive in my car, I pray. I'm in my office, I pray. And that's, I, I, I think when you pray well, you'd be surprised how things line up in, in more of a, uh, a, a more godly way. All of, our, uh, all of us um, here at First Presbyterian, of course, want our church to grow. Talk to me a little bit about how do churches grow according to the Bible and according to you. I think it's very clear when it comes to how churches grow. I mean, we're given, a, we're given the Great Commission. It's go, go, therefore, and make disciples. The reason why I sort of hesitated to embrace it is because it's hard. That is not, that is not easy to do. To go, therefore, is probably one of the hardest things that the Bible tells us we should do. Um, in my own experience, I'll say this. I think that uh, the only thing that has ever grown a ministry for my own self has been not only to go, therefore, but it's just to make friends. So my own, my own sort of the way I do ministry is, is very relationally. It's, I, I, I meet people. I like to walk around the city. I like to go to the coffee shops or wherever it is that people are there, and I make friends. And, and that's sort of the way. Now, sometimes that takes time to do. Sometimes when you move to a new place, it takes a little bit of effort and time to, to really develop those relationships. But when I think back to my own ministry, um, relationships and, uh, and friendships is absolutely, and that is the process of making disciples. It is, it is through friendships. It is through relationships. It's through all those things. And so... It's probably about the, as good of an answer as I have. Yeah. Right now, what book are you reading? I'm reading Growing Young. Everybody read it. Now, I was actually reading that book before I came here, which is really weird because I was sort of like reading it on my own. And, uh, and I'm like, you're reading that book too? Okay. So Growing Young. I'm just going to put it out there. Okay, next one. What is something about you that we don't know yet? Okay, here it is. I'm a huge fan of Disney. Um, my wife's a huge fan of Disney. We went to Disneyland on our honeymoon. Uh, one of the reasons why we're here, I'm like, it's only seven hours maybe to drive to Disney World right now. That's great. Uh, I'm part of a Disney podcast. We've interviewed lots of great Disney people. Um, who've been affiliated with Disney. I won't name names, but it's just been a wonderful, wonderful experience. If people want to get in touch with you or get a hold of you, what, what's the best way for us to do that? Um, I'm not an email person, so expect a very long time before I get back to an email. I'm a personal, personable person, so come see me. You know, if I'm, hopefully I'll be at the church. If you can, hop in my office, call my cell phone. You can, texting is even better because I, I like to text. And so, but I, with, with all that said, I, I'm, I'm very excited to meet so many people from this church and um, I hope I'm accessible. And, and if I'm not, hunt me down and wave your finger at me and say, why didn't you text me back or something? But yeah, I'm, my door's always open. Okay, and with that, that ends our session with Jeff today. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you.